Welcome back to Outside Sales Talk. Today, I have Darius Lahutifar with me, and we're going to be talking about qualifying prospects with the medic sales method, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Welcome to the show, Darius. It's really great to, to have you here today, honestly. Thank you for having me, Steve. Yeah. And uh, so just to introduce you to the group that, that for people that haven't heard who you are, uh, Darius is a coach, a trainer, and a mentor of sales teams, sales leaders, sales executives, and he's the founder of the Medic Academy um, and, and, and frankly, an expert in the Medic sales methodology, as well as um, similar uh, sales methodologies that also make pe- salespeople successful. He's also um, the author of the Amazon bestselling book, Always Be Qualifying Medic. So he's definitely uh, the right person to hear how to qualify um, qualify uh, prospects with the medic method here. So let's jump into it. Tell me, Darius, uh, what is medic and what does it stand for? Yeah, um, medic medic stands for uh, metrics, economic buyer, decision process, decision criteria, identifying pain, and champion. Those are the six letters of the acronym of MEDIC. And um, there is a a version some consider newer or more complete, which is MEDPIC, where the paper process and the competition have been added to it, both refer to the same thing. And it's not about the number of letters we add because obviously sales is not, uh, if sales was as easy as just checking a list of letters, uh, it would be known. So, uh, but yeah, these are um, the uh, elements of medic, uh, uh, which are the focus of the of the methodology uh, on the qualification through these elements. Yeah, well, and your book is called "Always Be Qualifying." So, what, why is qualification so important? And and Absolutely. how does that how does that relate to medic? Because I didn't I didn't see a Q in there. <laughs> that's that's uh, that's very true. Uh, so the qualification, all, all these are uh, part of the qualification of, of the elements of qualification. Always be qualifying in opposition to always be closing. Uh, you know, when you are selling a hard selling a low end product, um, very often retail, uh, inexpensive, uh, one shot transactional, maybe always be closing is a good uh, motto to have. When you are selling more sophisticated products, higher and enterprise, longer sales cycle with different people involved, actually closing uh, comes by itself when you do the right things at the beginning. Obviously, uh, first with a good discovery and then aligning your solution to to the customer's needs and, and then qualifying. Now, qualification is something which has been ignored or downplayed uh, for a long time, as if it was a one step, especially with the new, uh, newer uh, st- sales structures that we are seeing in the companies with SDRs versus AEs, um, qualification is often considered wrongly as a one step. Okay, this prospect is now qualified. Let's put all our efforts on it and close this deal. Uh, it's not working that way. I Quali- even I even heard AEs say, oh, I don't really qualify things because by the time the SDR passes me the deal, it's already qualified. That's the right. whole point of their job is to qualify it. And and I completely disagree. I think you're, as you're, as, I guess, as the title of your book says, you're always qualifying throughout the it, entire sales process. Absolutely. And a, and a deal is more or less qualified. And actually, uh, literally, we have a score calculator uh, at Medic Academy that we offer to our students, uh, which is the Medic score calculator, which asks you um, about 100 questions and you say yes or no. And at the end, you have a, a radar chart of you know, uh, how qualified is your opportunity and where are the gaps? Uh, do you have a champion? Do, do, have you done the right work meeting with the economic buyer and, and, and understanding what his or her requirements are? Uh, so um, qualification not being binary in, in one hand. And, and the other thing is that uh, 
it, it not being a, a great closer obviously is good. Being a great detective and understanding the customer's needs, uh, discovery is ob obviously good. What is good about qualification when you're, you're, you're a good qualifier is that if you take two salespersons with, within the same company, same performance of the product, same skills, uh, or same same knowledge or same number of hours of work with these two salesperson. The one who is qualifying better is the one who will have a higher win rate by definition because they are working on the deals which close. So their performance is skyrocketing without necessarily being twice more hard worker or better closers or anything else. So. That's why uh, qualification is something which has been kind of hidden, uh, downplayed, uh, but which is absolutely key in uh, sales performance. Yeah, qualification is why some salespeople seem not to work that hard, but have really great results because they they only work on the deals that are going to close, and especially in in environments where only the, where where they're you know it's not a a high transaction volume, but it's more of uh, you know fewer but larger deals. The reps that have that are they're spending their time on qualified deals, they end up closing more of them, and and if reps don't qualify well, they end up wasting a ton of time. Uh, absolutely, and 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 an example, which is uh, I, I'm going to give an example in in retail. Uh, most of salespeople, us, we salespeople very often. I mean, we. Um, um, I, I, I have been several times a serial entrepreneur, um, uh, running companies, CEO. So I have been a buyer several times and still am sometimes a buyer. But many salespeople don't have the experience of a buyer. That's why I'm going to take an example of, of being a buyer in a, in a retail situation. When you're going to you know, buy clothes in a, in a, in a, in a store or, or something. If you notice, there are some salespeople who are naturally good in, 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 in qualification and they come and ask you a question or from far check on you and spend time with you or don't. And uh, they are doing naturally, they have not been into medic because obviously in retail they don't do medic, but they are naturally good in qualification. They don't spend time with you if they don't feel that you are going to buy from them. And you mentioned the checklist evaluation process. Could you talk more about the checklist and how that works? Right. So, so Medic is is, uh, um, is is not really a checklist, but it uh, looks like a checklist by the definition of the acronyms. Uh, is helping us thinking about this. It's it helps us uh, even when we are driving to the customer. Okay, what are the things that I know for now, and what am I missing? Uh, they sent to me their decision criteria. It was a three, three pages document. They mentioned that and we look good. They, they are looking into a solution where we have uh, our differentiators are being shown. So decision criteria check. Uh, but uh, who's my champion here? This guy that I'm going to meet again for the third time uh, seems very nice to me, talks to me, etc. But I have asked a few things and I still don't have answers to those. I'm still not getting that meeting with the economic buyer or so ask questions and remove those pinky glasses and be realistic, ask questions. Is this person my champion? Uh, wh why do I think that this person has a champion? What is he or she winning from this deal? Uh, what is their uh, personal win um, in, in, in this context? So. Um, it, so, of course, that checklist champion uh, is there to remind you, but there are a lot of reflections, and that's one of the uh, myths about uh, a medic, uh, is, is that it's not just um, thinking of having a champion or, or having a champion, but everything which is be behind or under uh, that, that champion that you need to be able to uh, uh, understand, uh, observe, and see. Yeah, I, I mean, I had never actually heard of Medic until maybe, I don't know, five years ago or so. Um, 
and uh, but it was funny when I first learned about it and learned what it was and how it was structured. I was like, oh, back when I was a sales rep, this is totally what I did. I had, I, I think I had about, I had a, a I had a, a Google Doc that I would use, and uh, and before that, it was just a regular Word doc. Um, but I, I had this. It was kind of like a template, and I would you know customer name at the top, and you know. And, and then it, it, it had a, who, who are the champ, who's the champions with all the play, players involved. And then it had probably 20 questions that I would work into different conversations with the customer. So I wouldn't just like drill through them. I would kind of hop around. And, and I, as I learned things, I would fill out the questions. And, uh, you know, before, before a deal was really qualified or, I, and, and before it would close, I would always know the answer to all the questions. There were, there were some of the things were just like checking, like things that I had to do, like, translate this translate what the deal into ROI for them and what it's going to be worth for them in terms of real dollars have you had that conversation with who and I would just kind of keep track of all that stuff in a, in a doc and then then uh, when I first heard about medic I was like oh someone just made made this a lot more organized and, and smart I get it <laughs> that's it that's it Steve and you mentioned it you said you you heard about medic only five years ago Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's about the time uh, when I founded um, Medic Academy. While Medic is out there since over 20 years, we, we um, built it in, in the 90s uh, at PTC. Really? That, it yeah, really, I, I feel like it really blew up like five years ago. Like I, I just been hearing about it all the time. And that's and that's exactly the reason, and that's what what puts Medic honestly aside. Not not because it's my baby, but it's a reality. The fact is that. Medic is the only methodology which has been ground up. It, it has been practiced first, widely practiced, then became a methodology for everyone else to know and learn from it. Not uh, that a guru or academician or something, you know, someone, uh, a strong consultant thought about something and, I, and nothing wrong with those, but, but it, it, it's not this. Um, you know, thinking about a, a, a concept, writing a book about it, and then marketing it, and then inviting everyone to apply it. No, that's the contrary. It's the it's actually uh, you know compared to uh, great methodologies. Miller Heyman is a great methodology. Spin is a great methodology to for discovery. I I'm not criticizing any of those, but but Medic is is the contrary, and and the the, the way it happened is that PTC. Um, that it built really a sales machine with uh, hundreds of really successful salespeople trained this way. They became uh, VPs at Salesforce, at Oracle, at SAP, at different enterprise uh, software companies. And they, they continue the diffusion. That's how Medic got known because otherwise the book, the first book on Medic uh, wrote it last year only. Uh, so it's only now that it had become you know, a, uh, some sort of academy, I mean, literally medic academy and, and teaching it and, and, and so on. Um, and, and by the way, in that, talking about that is, uh, if, if we look at the history, the reason uh, uh, we, we had medic articulated and created at PTC is that we had a big challenge of uh, growing fast and ramping fast we were the, the first or the only vendor in our industry to hire sales from outside the industry. So for instance, compared to a methodology, which is the challenger sale, which is about uh, knowing your problems and being smarter than the customer, knowing those problems and challenging the customer with those things. Well, that requires a lot of knowledge of that industry. You mm -hmm. cannot do that by hiring people from out, outside the industry and three months later expecting them to do quotas. Doesn't happen. <laughs> With Medic, it does happen. That's, that's how we built Medic in order to articulate the uh, uh, things to do, uh, literally list of the things to do uh, so that a new sales rep who is good at execution, of course the sales rep uh, needs to be good at execution, being able to ask questions. But what questions, which questions to ask and when and how that we teach it in, in the courses and workshops. And 
As a salesperson, how do you determine whether Medicaid will be valuable to you and your industry and your role? How, how do you know who it's for and who it's not for? Right. Um, it, 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 this is not a binary either. Um, uh, Medi can be applied um, uh, 100% or 90% uh, depending on, on customers. But if you are selling a, an inexpensive product with a sales cycle of two days uh, with one person making a decision, you don't need Medi because you don't need to qualify. Either you sell or you don't. You have to spend this, this time with the prospect anyway. You try, it doesn't, uh, you sell or don't sell, you walk away to the next one. Transactional, uh, high volume, low uh, value, uh, that's not many. But on the other extreme, um, high value, uh, smaller volume, longer sales cycle means that different people are involved in that decision making means that you are going to spend time on on that prospect and that's a long sales cycle doesn't mean necessarily uh several months sometimes uh even six weeks or eight weeks sales cycle is long enough for you to uh justify the use of uh, uh medic uh as 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 an entrepreneur um I have always noticed that you have politics inside, a, in, inside your own startup as soon as you hire the third person. No politics with two persons, the third person comes in politics stuff. Well, that's, it's the same thing with the, uh, with the prospect. When there are different people involved in the sales decision, then the power base starts to work and, and then you need medic, you need to know who is suffering from these pains that we have listed in the discovery call as issues. If you are not talking to the people who are having the pain, you will not find the champion nor the economic buyer. You will just have someone who will take your resources and your time and you will not progress in the economy. Just to give one, uh, one example. Yeah, I, that makes a ton of sense to me. And, and tell me, you, you mentioned MedPick which I've also heard a bit about. And that, that's adding, what is that? That's adding a P and an extra C. D describe, are, are these the same things, medic and med pick, or is med, is med pick just adding some more acronyms? <laughs> what's uh, what's right. going on? Right, yeah, the, the two letters are, uh, the first one is uh, paper process. Uh, we, we mentioned uh, decision process um, in, in the original medic, and, but the decision process is basically this, the steps or stages that the prospects want to walk you through before they place a uh, purchase order or, or signing a contract. Um, and those decision process, you know, they could be uh, in, in tech, it could be demos, uh, could be proof of value, proof of concept. Those are the steps or the process they want to take you through. But there's also uh, the, the, the legal process, the paper process, the PO procurement. If you are um, um, a, a, an enterprise software uh, auditing, um, uh, the, the, the IT review, the security review, these are all paper process, which are different than it's your, your champion cannot change these things. They, their champion can help you know these steps uh, and, and accelerate them, but they are there as they are. While you're champion, you can convince them that there's no demo is necessary or that proof of value could be one week instead of one month. Uh, so in that regard, paper process is slightly different than anything else in the decision process. For those who are applying medic without mentioning the P, they are obviously doing, doing that P as well. Obviously they are um, taking care of the paper process. And the other aspect in the paper process is that when you don't, um, you don't pay attention to it, uh, uh, you um, may downplay it and it become a big problem towards the end of the sales cycle, typically towards the end of your quarter, uh, and you have not done your homework, meaning that you have not met with the legal people you have not understood what they are going to check in the um, 
uh, IT review, for instance. So it's important that from the uh, qu quite early in the sales process, you understand what is exactly this company's paper process before they can place an order or sign a contract. So that's yeah. that's why it 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 deserves uh, a letter uh, according to to um, some some of my ex uh, colleagues at at PTC, including myself. I mean, I've I've no religion uh, with or without uh, those letters. Uh, I'm so uh, focused on the fundamentals behind these letters and and helping salespeople to understand what is behind, and I will mention a point on, on that, that the letters themselves, um, I, I, I really don't care. I, I use both uh, alternatively. Uh, the second one is, is uh, competition, and, and <clears throat> competition, same thing. Those who don't mention it doesn't mean that they, they uh, ignore the competition. No, they, they, the competition is already present in other elements of medic. For instance, decision criteria, um, I have a value triangle where um, uh, I expose the, the, the customer's need, us, and then the competition, the uh, summits of the, the triangle and how we need to read into the decision criteria when they are expressed by the prospect to understand with this criteria, who is this favoring? Who is this criteria for? or who in the account has pushed so that this criteria goes to the top of the list of their criteria, because this criteria could be the reason for them choosing us versus our competition. So, so the whole point about criteria, decision criteria, understanding and evaluating is versus the competition. If you are, uh, selling uh, Tesla uh, versus uh, Mercedes, and the number one uh, criteria is um, sustainability or uh, renewable energy, uh, obviously there is no point to compete with because that criteria means I want Tesla. It's not written, but it's, that's what it means. So um, we talk about, um, having the playing field level or not is the playing field level. The decision criteria is all about understanding that playing field. Are we playing in, in, in a fair environment or, um, or unfair advantage for us because we have worked well before and, and, and educated uh, those who are writing these decision criteria in our favor or uh, 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 the, co the our competitor has done a good job doing that and it's already lost before we even start because the criteria are not in our favor. Uh, so yeah. so well, all that is about competition. Uh, we don't necessarily need to mention the competition as a letter to uh, notice that. Yes. Makes perfect sense to me, yeah. And, and I think that this, the, the exact letters and adding kind of subletters like this, um, you know, the, the extra C or, or the understanding of the legal decision-making process. Um, I, I think every company needs to adjust the, the, the base level. Like the, every company is going to be dealing with those core letters, but then there's probably 10 more questions or concepts or areas. And just depending on what you're selling, I mean, you know, like the legals, for example, that can be super important depending on what you're selling, right? Depending who you're selling to, how risky it is, how, how it, are you selling a new security system that the, that the, the, the CISO, the chief security officer is gonna have to sign off on? Yeah, if you sell cheap, you know, new, new security software to, uh, to large corporations, you're gonna have to get, that's, that's gotta have its own letter. And if it's something that's gonna have complex you know, legal negotiations around it, of course, that's going to get their own, its its own letter. If you're in a super competitive space, you know, even which competitor, you know, it, it, it really all this stuff comes into play. And and I uh, I forget how many things that I really felt were important for every deal to like really make sure I'd have had had a conversation with the with my sponsor at the company about. But you know, th things like legals, I did I would have to bring that up, and I would have to bring it up early. So I could run things in parallel, right? If you don't bring if you don't bring up legals early enough, then you end up kind of closing the sponsor, and then they're like, 
Oh, but it, but you can't you can't forecast the deal appropriately if the sponsor is going to say, oh, actually, you're not going to be able to. Uh, we're not going to be able to get this signed for a year. I and mean, by the time we pass this through legals, you're like a year. I, I forecast this for two months from now. <laughs> like, so I, I think it, it this this basic framework needs to be. You have to rethink it for your individual area and company and your and your role at at, at the company. I, I guess let's talk about that. How much do you think? you should customize this process for your individual role in sales or role in sales management. And uh, so yeah, how much should it be customized and, and how do you go about figuring out what should be added or subtracted? What, what thought, what's the thought process there? Yeah. Uh, cu customization. Let's talk about it. And, and, and the, the point I wanted to refer to, which uh, is close to this one while I'm answering to this question is about those tools. So some, some people, um, uh, come uh, uh, to us and saying, you know, we, we, we want to do it with a tool. Uh, and and it's, it's amazing. I mean, I have done all my career uh, in, in software and SaaS. So uh, uh, trust me, I believe in tools and, and tools help uh, for sure. Automating things obviously is, is the thing to do. But for in sales, please stop with the tools. We have done too many tools. And, and I mean, I, I also provide a platform. My platform is a tool. You are providing a tool at your company. It's a tool. But, but uh, guys, if you want, if we want our salespeople to be successful, we need to make a pause on the tools and work on skills. I'm seeing too many salespeople, especially younger salespeople, who don't know how to do things and, and they rely on tools. Um, medic, I have a few partners who have done um, uh, medic uh, plugins, I would call them on Salesforce, uh, where you have stages pre-set uh, uh, so that you can say, okay, uh, how am I doing with my champion or, or have I met with the economic buyer? And those are stages in Salesforce and, and they are extremely dangerous because um, uh, salespeople think that they have checked that box and it's done. And uh, you know, we know, I know that it's not working that way. We can write whatever we want in those tools and, and input into the system uh, only um, um, inside uh, us. Uh, we know exactly, and, and sometimes we don't even know because we haven't asked ourselves the right questions, but at best uh, in, we, we know if we have that champion, if that champion has it. These things are not in the tools and, and learning, for instance, learning how to identify a champion. We are, one of the exercises in, 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 in my workshops is we are in a discovery call, first time with the prospect, five persons are in the room or in the Zoom call, and they, those are their, their titles, and we have a one-hour conversation on the discovery, and we do also a very short, brief presentation of 10 minutes of what we're doing. How do we identify a potential champion right there? What should we be looking for among those five persons, and how do we identify? You cannot do that with a tool. There's no tool you can build in the world which will help you with that. The most advanced AI won't do that. Um, yeah, I mean, and, and sales takes judgment, right? And, you know, computers, yes. are, computers are real good at adding and subtracting, but they don't have judgment yet. Um, and and I, I can see how an organization might over tool this, you know, you try to you know, just boil medic down to, you know, the M field in Salesforce and the E field and, or whatever CRM, the E field, the D field, the second D field, you know, and, and that's not what this is about. I mean, I, I feel like this is uh, a dynamic series of questions and things to areas to understand and have conversations about and take notes on those conversations. So you can remember <laughs> what, what happened. I, I feel like it's much more of like a free form note-taking exercise on top of a bunch of questions that are already set. And maybe there's a, a great way to do that in, in your CRM system. And, I, and obviously you want to capture the information somewhere, but, uh, but yeah, I get what you're saying about things being over-tooled for sure. Right. Right. Um, what, what about, um, 
what about other sales methodologies? How, how should you layer medic in with other um, classic or other important sales methodologies that, that, that you might be employing? Uh, that's a great question. I believe that different sales methodologies are uh, different perspectives of looking into a problem. So they, most of them are complementary. They are not contradicting each other. Um, I, I love solution selling. It's a good old methodology. I love spin, uh, mentioned it uh, earlier. The only one I have uh, some, some uh, questions about that, that I love as an observation uh, is the challenger sale. The challenger sale, I, when I first read the book, is fantastic uh, book. I totally related to my teams. Uh, you know, this guy was a challenger. This guy was a hard worker. Fantastic, but it's not a methodology. Methodo by methodology, I mean uh, literally uh, after a few hours of uh, medic training, self-paced and workshop, and, and, and people on LinkedIn post it. It's not me saying, uh, guys come out of the workshop saying this was eye-opening. This was an aha moment because, because they are seeing that that deal that they lost is because they thought that person was their champion. And for this reason, that person was not the champion. Or this, this deal, they lost it because the economic buyer was the one uh, who had the pain and they totally ignored it. They talked to someone who was ready to talk, not someone who had a pain to, to, to relieve. So, um, but, but the, um, the challenger say, you cannot uh, implement this uh, in a reasonable time saying, hey, become a challenger. No, it takes time. It takes years and it's industry specific. Medic is not industry specific. It's not, you, you can't take uh, someone who knows Medic from selling CRM, then have them sell ERP or, or have them sell maps or whatever they want. It's, it's the same thing. You cannot do that with the challenger. But but they, they, they are, they, they, I think they are complementary. Um, uh, they, uh, medic, I don't have the pretension that uh, someone who uh, learns medic uh, has learned it all and there is nothing else to learn. No, they can, they can learn better um, with more focus on, uh, on uh, discovery. They can uh, learn more within the presentation skills. I don't cover presentation skills and, and how to deliver a great presentation, for instance. I don't do time management. Time management is key in, in any sales uh, job. We don't say it enough. I don't cover those. So there are a lot of uh, other trainings which are totally complementary to uh, medic. What would you say the best places for a salesperson to start with metrics or with pain in their conversation with their customer? With pain, no doubt, with pain. The pain needs to be quantified and that we have half of the metrics, the, the other half being the, the proof points. Uh, one hand, quantifying the pain and then proving how much our solution will solve that pain and, and how it can be measured. But the beginning uh, is absolutely, uh, with no doubt, is the uh, pain point. And, and how do you go about quantifying pain? How do you? What, what are your favorite ways to do that? What What happens if we you leave it right there? So what? The customer says we have this problem. What? Why is it a problem? What? What? How does it impact? the CEO's goals or the, it, it, it's a problem because it slows us down. We, we're not moving as fast as we could. How much it slows you down? We think we could get these important projects out three months earlier. If we, if we did that. Okay. That makes sense. And if you do it three months earlier, what, what, what are the consequences of that? Well, I think we'd, uh, we'd acquire this many more customers over, you know, we, we'd acquire 15 customers a month more if we got that out um, okay. th three months earlier. And that, and what's the average per customer? The average, uh, it, the average per customer is $25,000. Okay. So here we go. <laughs> Excellent. I, I just want to, I wanted to run that through, uh, you know, with people because I, I think that's so important. The, the, the quantification of, of taking someone's, uh, 
taking someone's problem and turning it into real dollar values for them. Absolutely. And for your listeners, let, let, since we are on it, let me, let me give another uh, nugget here is who is this impacting? This is something that most salespeople forget. For instance, you, we are having this conversation with, let's say uh, it's, it's on uh, uh, CRM, you're selling CRM and the IT guy is, is asking this. And the IT guy is a good guy. He has done his homework or she has done their homework and, and they have answers to a lot of questions. But at the end of the day, if you do not get hold of that real person who, who is being hurt by the pain, you will not have enough motivation, enough personal win and gain there. So one great question in order to help with that is, uh, I don't remember what was, what, what, what was the case studies that we were playing with, even though you felt that I, I have done this hundred times in my life, is, is uh, who, does, who, who is um, in, in charge of those customers? Whose bonus or whose goals will be impacted when you make less of those customers? I mean, in this case, obviously, yeah, I think the, the answer is the CRO. And that's why in order to sell CRM, you need to go to the CRO, not the IT director. Yeah, I've got a great story that illustrates this from back back when I was Badger Maps, only salesperson. This is our first, uh, this is probably 2012, 2013. And this is our first major company that was getting on board. And we had talks, we had been talking to like a, kind of mid-level sales manager and they put us in touch with with the IT team um, and we showed we, we, were, we were engaged with the IT team showing them the kind of things we could do and they were like this is great this would definitely help the the salespeople a ton um, you know we'll w- this is probably gonna you know it'll probably be two years before this will be an initiative that we can we can actually do because you know we're just so busy on the IT team we don't have time to implement stuff like this and I said, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm glad you like it. And then sure enough, I went to the VP of sales and, uh, and, and, and walked through these types of talk paths where it's like, okay, so, you know, I, I understand this would be useful, but how, how, how useful would it be? And we backed into how much more they, their reps would be able to sell in his estimation if, uh, if, they, had, if they had this tool making them more efficient. And, and I was like, oh, wow, so you're losing that many hundreds of thousands of dollars every month? From, from this inefficiency? And he's like, yeah. And I was like, well, I mean, and I, think, I think that deal was a hundred grand a year. So it was just a total slam dunk for him. Um, and, and so, but, so, but that, that deal did not take two years to, uh, to, get, to get looked at um, as, as, as the IT team thought it was going to. It took uh, about two weeks <laughs> after I talked to the CEO, it was being, it was being, uh, it was in trial. So... <laughs> That's, that's one of the best moments in sales that I love. And, and even, even now, after 30 years of uh, career, uh, I love these moments because uh, things change drastically when you talk to the right people. And, and the challenge for salespeople is that, especially uh, nowadays when a lot of you know, our lead traction systems are on, the, on, on, on our website, so we receive a lot of incoming uh, leads, um, is that someone has come to us and the, the um, uh, passive or lazy, if, if, if I can use that word, approach by sales is to stick with that person. Well, that, that the person is interested. Why should I change? The person is asking questions. They reply to my email. They are returning my calls. So why should I change? It doesn't even occur to their mind to, to change. But that person is just... Uh, you know, taking uh, the role of being a communication, someone else in the organization has expressed a need or wants this. Go find that someone else, go talk to them, and you will see, as you mentioned, uh, magically your two year sales cycle gets down to two weeks and the, the, the size and the scope of the deal grows and so on. Yeah, it's really uh, one of the best parts of sales is that, you know, salespeople unlock value for, for their customers, right? Their customers wouldn't do the thing that you're selling unless, 
unless it was going to help you, you know, or help them rather. They're, people are smart and they're smart enough to figure out, is this going to help me or not? Which is why it's so important to work for a company that really creates value because it's real hard to sell things that don't create value or that they have competitors that create more value. You know, it's, uh, but salespeople are really the, the lubrication of the entire economy is the way I, I think of it. Because all these companies out there are doing things slower than they could, less, less well than they could, using the old machine, using the old technology. And, and it's a salesperson that comes in and shows them, hey, you're gonna, you guys are going to do better if you add this to, to your mix. And, uh, and so they're, it's really, uh, it's, it's almost, it, it, they bring the knowledge to the table and then, and the deal wouldn't happen. Deals don't happen if they're not worth it for everybody involved, right? Right, right. I heard the company uh, yesterday, actually, it was announced yesterday, a company came out of uh, um, uh, uh, some veterans, uh, uh, serial entrepreneurs uh, with the uh, seed found of $50 million. And the company's name, I don't know if you heard that in the news yesterday, uh, is, is DevRev. Um, and DevRev is basically developments and revenue, and 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 it comes from the idea that um, you know these are the two most important part of in, in a company, and and, and connecting these uh, together, how to uh, leverage um, uh, revenue from the customers and 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 do developments which are in line, and and that made me think that this is the reality. There are two things uh, which are really at a higher level than anything else in the company. Product development or whatever it is, product that the customer, that, that we build for the customer and sales where we translate the need of the customers into dollars, which is vital for any company. Everything else is, is a lower, with all respect for marketers, for HR, for finance, uh, <laughs> great people, but everything else is secondary to these two. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, a phrase that reminds me of that, that, uh, that I don't use myself, but uh, the, a philosophy I heard uh, propagated years ago was you make the shit or you sell, sell the shit or you are shit. Those are the options. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't believe that myself, but that, I, that's, a, that's an old business saying that, I, that I, I've heard used many times. But, uh, but I, I do think it, it does... There's a lot of wisdom to the importance of sales, and a lot of companies don't realize how important it is. I think um, for the, for all the sales managers out there, tell me how effective and how how much how does Medic help them at sales forecasting? How does how does having Medic occurring on your team improve forecasting? Oh, drastically. Uh, that's that's the number one benefit of 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 Medic. The reason is simple: is that when we uh, help uh, sales managers, and I, by the way, I believe first line managers are the most strategic role in any company, more than the CRO, more than the salespeople, first line sales managers. Why? Because they need to be at the same time tactical and back up the team, uh, play uh, as a doer while being strategic enough in, in hiring, in envisioning the future, and in, in, and, and doing strategy. Anyway, uh, so sales managers, uh, we have trainings for them, uh, uh, MedPeak for managers. And in, in those training, uh, we help them asking questions within the framework of Medic to their reps in order to qualify their forecast, in order to help them qualify their forecast. It's coaching and giving tips in coaching. And the, the key is that, for instance, just, just, just an example, is this person your champion? What proof do you have that this person is a champion? Okay, if after two, three, four questions regarding champion, you figure out that this person is not a champion and we don't have a champion, I, I don't want to, to see any deal in the forecast this quarter if we don't have a champion. Done. Uh, it goes back to the pipeline. Okay, and then when the, when the forecast is reduced at, at the first QBR or let, you know, two weeks into the quarter, we see that the forecast is, is not that strong. It will force salespeople to go and, and find deals which are better qualified or bringing deals from the pipeline into the forecast by qualifying them, going and finding the champion. And we give them tools, uh, methods uh, in order to uh, uh, find the right champion. It's very, very easy actually. Um, 
uh, is 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 not simple to do, uh, uh, but but easy to uh, find the method uh, for for the for the champion. So forecasts um, become very fast, uh, extremely solid uh, because they shrink. Uh, they they immediately shrink. Uh, you haven't asked a question, but if I may, I can give you other uh, metrics on, on when, you, when you implement Medic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd uh, be great. The, the, the other one, and that, that's uh, a, a, a uh, GAFA customer uh, uh, from two weeks ago uh, who got their training in, in March. And during Q2, they measured uh, they have 20% uh, shorter um, sales cycle and um, fifteen percent higher average per opportunity. Um, increasing the average size because when you have champions um, and you have developed that relationship, uh, you 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 are not obliged to uh, stage more the deal. You can do more at each stage, so you can. You can sell more and of course uh, sell shorter. Again, this goes hand in hand with uh, Medic. If you have identified the decision process, if you have been early in finding the paper process and, and worked in parallel uh, from the beginning with contracts, uh, legal and, and procurement, um, all these help you reduce. And also obviously a champion, um, one of the things that's another a nugget for our uh, listener is do not ever put a deal in your forecast before sharing that with your champion. Hey, Mr. or Mrs. Champion, I'm counting on this deal. I'm committing to my manager for this deal in this quarter. Am I doing right? Do you support it? Do you, what, what's your advice? What, what do you tell? If the champion says no, first thing, remove it from the forecast, then ask the champion, why not? What should we do in order to bring it back? But inside you, even if you don't share that with the champion, inside you, for your manager, remove it until the champion says for sure it's coming. And, 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 and of course, if the champion says yes, then the follow-up question is that, so can I count on you if this is, uh, we, if we both feel that it's slipping so that you make to take the right actions on it to help me do, doing it. So engage the same way. It's 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 really it's a coaching. It's the same way your manager does this with you. Do it with the champion. Uh, so yeah, if if people took nothing away from today except for that, it would be a it would be a, a valuable day because that is such great advice and and forecasting is so hard and um, and and what a great way to make it more accurate, just to, you know, level with your champion, you know, let, let them tell you if they think that you can get this done within, you know, the next two months, because that's, if they don't think so, then it's certainly not going to happen, right? Absolutely. Think, think about it. We are making assumptions sometimes in million dollar deals. Uh, in ourselves, we keep it for us, for ourselves. We don't ask the champion, is this coming? I'm counting on it. My life <laughs> depends on it. <laughs> or, or, or my wife's vacations depends on it. <laughs> right, right. Might as well be your life. Well, l- let's, uh, let's do the next section is sales in 60 seconds. So quick questions, quick answers. Okay. Tell me, what are the top myths of Medic? Okay. Um, so... One of the myths is that I have a medic uh, spreadsheet or a plugin on Salesforce or any CRM, and I'm I'm then applying medic. Wrong. Uh, uh, it is a high chance you are just checking boxes and and you are not doing what you should. The other the other myth is uh, it, it's a checklist. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I I know uh, uh, there there is a champion there. Uh, and but but wait wait is the champion doing what they should do is have you uh, met the economic buyer thanks to the champion is the champion sharing with you where you stand how competitive how, how your competitors are doing and is is it is it transparent communication 
Um, the other myth is, uh, yeah, I have uh, metrics because I know that this pain is costing them a million dollar every six months. So I, I, I have the metrics. Well, uh, you have half of the metrics. Uh, you, you know uh, why they should look into something, but you don't know why they should buy your product. Uh, the, uh, the three questions uh, Medic uh, help you uh, ask customers and prospects is why anything, and that's pain. Um, why now, that's your forecast. And why us? Uh, that's why we're winning. Uh, so why anything? Why now? Why us? Um, and what, what would you say the, the most common mistake that you see salespeople make during the medic process is? Um, it's taking a coach uh, for a champion. Uh, because someone is talking to us and is nice and returns the calls and replies to emails, uh, but that person is either not influential enough or not having the personal win enough doesn't do the job of a champion. Can you ever make a coach into a champion? Um, no, I think, cause I think a lot of, a lot of salespeople try. <laughs> right, right. A, 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 a coach, um, I, I mean, the way we define it, a coach is necessarily someone who does not have access to the economic buyer, does not have that, that, that influence. So you cannot change that. You can, you can change, uh, a, a stakeholder, an influential person in the account, transform them into a champion. That definitely, yes. Uh, someone who is not friendly with you, it's not, not an enemy. Usually enemies have reasons to be enemies. But someone who is neutral, doesn't talk to you, is, is hard to get access to, um, it's indifferent, uh, and, and, but, but they are influential. They have a, an important role. They can make decisions and so on. Well, yeah, you can transform them into the champion, by going and, and um, helping them uh, quantifying pain, um, showing the proof of your solution and, and, and those things. In your opinion, what's the most important part of Medic? Uh, no champion, no deal. If you have really a good champion, a strong champion, a real champion as we define it, that champion can fix any other element of Medic. That champion can help you with the metrics, can get you in front of the economic buyer, can influence the decision criteria so that you win, can uh, shorten the decision process and explain to you what you need to do in order to contract to be signed, can talk to you about what the competitors is doing and how it, everything else can be done if you have a strong champion. And as an actionable takeaway, what should the field salespeople listening today do as a first step towards implementing Medic at their, for themselves or for their company? They should come and take courses at Medic Academy. That's so obvious. <laughs> you know that. I, I, I'm sure you knew that that would, would have been my answer. <laughs> and it's a great answer. Well, I'm going to try to summarize. Um, I'm going to try to summarize all the things that you've, that you've taught us today, which is obviously a lot. Um, first, MEDIC stands for Metrics, Economic Buyer, Decision Criteria, Decision Process, Identify Pain, and Champion. And all of these are effectively elements of qualification that is ongoing throughout your, your sales cycle. Qualification is truly important for every single step of the sales process. And if you do it right, then your deals will close themselves. The salesperson who can qualify better will have a better win rate. You can ask questions to find a champion within the company. Your champion should also, he, he or she needs to be someone who is getting something out of the deal. You know, they stand to win or lose if this happens or doesn't happen. So they, they need it to make their number. They need, they, they need it to meet their metrics. They, they, uh, they're, the, they're the person who the responsibility falls on their shoulders. And that's not always the economic buyer. 
So Medic helps define which questions to ask, when, and how you ask those questions. When there are different people involved in the sales decision, it's really important to use Medic. So um, the other Medic's close cousin, which is kind of adds some more specificity is MedPick. And so this is metrics, economic buyer, decision criteria, decision process, which so that's all the same. And then paper process, and then identify pain, champion, and the final, and then they add a C, competition. Don't just rely on sales tools. Salespeople need to work on their skills so that they can actually qualify deals with, with using these questions and gaining these understandings. Medic can work alongside and support other sales methodologies. These, these aren't exclusive. Ask, ask yourself who is impacted by the sales that it, by, by getting this deal done and work, um, work to get in contact with those people because they can really be your champions. They're the ones that are most likely to actually get a deal over the line and not just be interested. Sales managers can ask their sales reps questions about, their, about how they've qualified their deals with Medic when, when they're doing their forecast. And a really important point uh, that, that Darius gave us about forecasting, don't put a deal in your forecast before sharing it with your champion uh, to make sure that they support you forecasting it. So you got to ask them, hey, I, I'm gonna I, I'm gonna tell my manager that this is gonna close this quarter. Is is that okay or this year, whatever it is, depending on your sales cycle, this month, whatever. Um, ask, mention that to them before you do it, and that you'll the because you'll get good answers there. Um, not only do you, will you uncover other objections that other stakeholders have, but you'll just get their opinion on whether or not you know, given everything they know, whether or not what the timeline is that you can get this done. And that'll save you keep a lot of egg off your face with your management team. Well, this has been absolutely fantastic, Darius. Uh, where, where can our listeners read more about your work? How do they learn more about what you do? How do they reach out to you? Uh, yeah, uh, Medic Academy's website is medic, M-E-D-D-I-C dot academy. So it's not a dot com or something else medic.academy that's the website where you have a lot of information um the the blog on that same site you have regularly articles that the most recent one uh i i'm sure you will uh, love it uh, steve is comparison between the partitioned sales uh, uh uh structure like sdr ae structure versus the full cycle salespeople is a debate on uh, goods and bads about those as an example. So mm -hmm. a lot of articles on, on the blog um, and, and the links to the, to the book uh, as well. And of course, all the uh, courses are available there as uh, connecting with me personally. I welcome uh, everyone on LinkedIn. Uh, you need to know my email address. So if you're listening, my email address is Darius at medic.academy, D-A-R-I-U-S at medic.academy. Well, well, we will certainly put all that in the show notes so that people can find it because a lot of them are driving right now. Uh, Darius, honestly, this has been a great episode of the Outside Sales Talk. And if anyone out there listening works in field sales, you'll love Badger Maps. That's the number one route planner. Helps you sell 20% more and drive 20% less. You can get a free trial of Badger Maps at www.badgermapping.com today. And if anyone out there can think of other sales reps that would benefit from learning about Medic um, and, and what Darius has had to say today for us, definitely uh, forward this episode on to them. Take care until next time, everybody. And, and Darius, thanks so much for being on the show today. Thank you, Steve. Thank you for having me.